We get this dangerously wrong in the CrossFit space and the wider fitness industry. And I feel like it's about time that somebody that has experienced this themselves spelled it out. Hayley Adams' journey has really well highlighted this and I really appreciate her honesty on this subject. If you're new here, my name's Beth and I make commentary content on CrossFit, functional training, hybrid training and trends within the wider fitness space. I've also struggled with EDs and mental health so I come from that kind of angle. Hayley pulled out the CrossFit game season in 2023 with this post. She said, I've battled with an eating disorder, I've struggled with my mental health ever since, I've suffered in silence because of the pressure to make everything seem like it's okay. I kept a smile on my face and it's been a hard few years when every single day has been a battle. EDs are so normalised and even to some extent even praised within the fitness industry. This is a great post from Ban Haas who is a psychologist and she's worked within the ED space for a long time. EDs have one of the highest mortality rates of any mental illness. Despite this the fitness industry and diet culture continues to perpetuate conditions that normalise disordered relationships with food and exercise. We glorify and praise these habits under the guise of healthy living and discipline. We make it easier for these struggles to go unnoticed and we even make it acceptable. And especially within elite levels of sport, it's very well documented that EDs can start within sports. Whether that's poor nutritional advice coming from coaches or just a general obsession within the space over weight and body size, it can easily seem like somebody is just super dedicated to their sport when they're actually really struggling. Hayley has announced that she'll be competing again in the 2024 season, but she's gonna be doing it slightly differently. She's spoken pretty openly about how her ED was exacerbated by people making comments on her body. Commenting on the way you look and it basically non-stop is definitely one of the hardest things that I had to deal with and try to, you know, figure out because again, it's like, okay, well I'm supposed to be strong and I'm supposed to be like putting on muscle, but not too much muscle because then you're like, you can't do the things that you're good at. And it's just, it, it felt so, like it was never ending. Like it, it felt like you could never be good enough um and of course you deal with body dysmorphia and yeah I, i've definitely had my fair share of all of those feelings and it's it's so sad to look back at like all of my teenage years and be like you were so beautiful and you couldn't see it and then you literally thought like you were so ugly and you just wanted to hide yourself and like i still deal with that and I'm like, that is so far from the truth. I was always called like, oh, she she's one of the smaller ones, this, that. She's put on muscle. And like, what people don't realize is that like feeds things. So if I'm like, if people are saying, oh, she's one of the smallest ones out there, that's only feeding it, not in a good way. But I'm people. like, oh, I'm the smallest one. No matter what we say about our own bodies, because that is a huge part of having an ED, no matter what we wear, no matter what we look like, it's never okay to make comments on people's bodies. And by continuing to do so, when somebody has openly spoken out about how much it affects them, you are actively, intentionally causing harm to that person. And doing it under the guise of health or trying to help them is just a complete lie, honestly. We currently live in an epidemic of people thinking it's okay to give advice and their opinions on the way people look and what they're eating and how they're training and what they're doing with their bodies. It happens a lot in CrossFit, but it's not limited to the CrossFit space. My page personally attracts a lot of gym bros, people outside of the CrossFit space commenting on my body and my nutrition habits, as well as people within the CrossFit space. Space. I am constantly inundated with advice. And Ban Haas puts it really well here. Your lived experience alone does not qualify you to work with people who are struggling with eating disorders. Good intentions and a desire to help is simply not enough. I'm not sure if you know this, but the only people that are actually qualified to give people that have EDs nutritional advice are dietitians with specific expertise in ED treatment. Not people with a basic knowledge of nutrition, not people that have lost weight once, not people that have lost 10 pounds to go on holiday and the funny thing is people look at me and presume that I have no knowledge of nutrition but I actually have multiple qualifications in nutrition and that for me made it even harder to deal with my ED. It made recovery way more difficult because I had all of this knowledge that I had to also battle on top of trying to eat like a normal human and unless you've been through that journey yourself you have no idea how hard that is. The reason making comments on people's bodies is so problematic is because you don't know what you're praising or shaming. You don't know if you're celebrating the weight loss of someone with depression or cancer or an illness. You don't know if you're praising an ED. And if you're shaming somebody in a larger body, you definitely don't care about their health because shaming people has only proven to make them gain weight, not lose weight. 
Plus, anybody making nasty comments about how somebody looks is clearly just an awful person anyway. Nobody that is happy with their life and mentally in a good place makes those kind of comments. That is somebody that can't rationalise, deal with and process their own emotions, lashing out to make themselves feel better. Now, from my experience and in my personal experience, and also from what Haley has said, EDs can operate in this way. If you're smaller and people tell you that you're looking on the smaller side, so in Haley's case, they said you're one of the smallest athletes out there, you're skinny, you need to eat a burger, you need to put on some weight. That only fuels the ED. So in that instance, she's like, oh, I'm small, I should get smaller. Like, it's a mental illness and it thrives on knowing that. People with EDs often have an obsession with wanting to look thinner or sicker or smaller in some way, meeting some beauty standards or measurements or something. So telling someone that they're small is only gonna increase that. But also telling somebody that they look bigger, that they've put on muscle or that they just look bigger generally, that is gonna make it worse as well. Especially when somebody tells you that you look healthy, you instantly assume that that means you look bigger. And when you're plagued with this mental illness, that makes the whole thing worse and can easily cause a relapse. And now for people that are big, like me, I've been in lots of different sizes when I've struggled with my ED because mine is this one that I'll put on the screen and it has a binge eating component. And a lot of people with this one can be a range of different sizes and when you're a bigger person and you're shamed or somebody makes comments on your body that can trigger either the starving behaviors or the binging behaviors so it can cause even further weight gain from the shame and also from triggering the ED. And triggers work in a way that are completely irrational. You can hear a comment like that and it's almost like you're completely out of control. That's what EDs are like anyway. You almost go into this trance. Often I hadn't realized what had caused it until I was out the other side of a binge or the other part of my ED. But then looking back, you kind of pinpoint the triggers throughout the day or the week and you know what caused it. And quite frequently for me, comments on my body were the big one. Over the years, they have been one of the biggest triggers. So I totally get where she's coming from. And people need to actually take this seriously because if they actually cared about the health of these people, then they wouldn't be doing it. It's not that hard to not comment. But basically all of 2022, I was not happy at all and felt that. So like I, I didn't want to compete. I dreaded like, you know, even going. I would like hope the, the competition day wouldn't come because I know that I'm just like I was miserable and I was just unhappy and felt so much pressure, so much stress, anxiety. Um, so that was basically all of 2020. Would be like, why does she look so miserable or like she looks so sad? And it's like because I was like I literally hated every ounce of what I was doing and was so unfulfilled and just miserable that like I did not want to be there so yeah of course I looked miserable I thought getting ninth place my worst finish was the end of the world I felt like there was nothing else to live for which is so sad. Hayley also struggled with losing her joy for training. And she's now in a place where she's finding her joy again for training and she's looking forward to competing in the CrossFit Games. And again, from my personal experience, even though I'm on a completely different level, competing in CrossFit, obsessing about my appearance and my performance, and the deep comparison that comes within that made me hate the sport for a period of time. And when I started taking recovery seriously after a long period of struggling, and competing and trying to be the absolute best I could be. I continued to train, but my goals were similar to Haley's. I wanted to show up to competition just to have fun and enjoy it and absorb the atmosphere. And I wanted to find joy in my training again and do some slightly different things, not necessarily work on my weaknesses or try and progress in the sport, but just enjoy exercise and not see it as a punishment or something that I needed to dramatically improve on or something that I obsessed over because it took over my whole life. I had no life outside of CrossFit for a long time and now I definitely do and you can see the difference in Hayley now when she talks about it. She's still on this journey but I know so many people within the CrossFit space over the seven years that I've done it that have been through a similar journey that have fallen out of love with the sport because they put so much pressure on themselves. Whether they've struggled with something similar to us or not it definitely happens a lot. Some athletes that are more competitive than me, some that are just trying to get their first gymnastic skills, people from all walks of life in all age categories struggle with this. I've seen so many people burn out from CrossFit, hate the sport, hate themselves, hate their body, their performance, the open and everything about it. These struggles are not limited to the elite athletes in the sport or even within CrossFit at all. 
This can happen to any athlete within any sport or any regular person training in the gym especially with social media the way it is now. And it's so amazing of Hayley to speak out about this because it's a really important discussion, especially as a younger athlete as well. So many people will be looking up to her. It had a massive impact on me when she spoke out about it and seeing her train in a regular gym, doing some like normal stuff like on a treadmill, that was really refreshing for me. And it made me realize it doesn't always have to be all about CrossFit. Exercise can just be for enjoyment. I'm so excited to see what she does next. Mal O'Brien is out the CrossFit Games and she has announced that she won't be competing this year. Are you wondering how she's going to survive without CrossFit? If you'd like to hear more then watch this video next. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!